Hi everyone and welcome in the sixth video of this playlist, the scientific backtesting guide. In this video, we will talk about the Monte Carlo simulation and we will explain how to use it in backtesting because as you know, we can use it in derivative pricing, backtesting, risk management, so it's a bit confused. Here, I will explain you in detail how to use it in backtesting. As always, each video of this playlist is associated to a blog post from my blog. So if you are interested by read it, because I explain the same thing, but in the different way, feel free to take a look to the link in the description. And this video and the whole playlist is sponsored by the AlphaQuant program, a quant trading community that combines e-learning videos, seven day of a seven support and real life quant monthly projects. So if you are interested by taking your quant trading to the next level, just take a look in the description. So the Monte Carlo simulation is also a robustness test. So it's pretty similar than the CPCV that we have seen in the previous uh, video. So if you were comfortable with the CPCV, you will be very comfortable with the Monte Carlo simulation because it's a bit easier to understand. So we have all seen this type of graph, okay? The goal is to explain a bit why we use the Monte Carlo simulation in trading and more precisely here in backtesting. As we have said in many of the previous video, the price is random. It follows a distribution. So it means that it is a stochastic process and the Monte Carlo simulation are very good to modelize the stochastic processes. And that's why we use the Monte Carlo simulation in trading. That's not more complex than that. But when we do a backtest, we have several possibilities. We have the resampling method and the generated data method. The resampling method is very easy. You will take your returns from the rock forward optimization or from a simple backtest, okay? And you will just change the order of the returns. Now you should question what is the advantage of doing that? And it's quite easy to understand. It is to compute the risk of your trading strategy, okay? Because when you will have the same returns, but not order in the same way, you will also have different risk. You will always have the same returns, but never the same risk. And that's what we need to quantify, okay? Because as the past is only one path that the past could be, it means that the risk is only one risk that you can suffer from, okay? So you need to test different paths from historical data, from generated data, to be sure to quantify in the better way possible the risk of your strategy. So the resampling data is very easy. For example, if you have plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, okay? One of the possible over order, okay, can be minus one, minus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. As you can see here, the drawdown will not be the same each time. Here, you will have a drawdown of 2% and here a drawdown lower than 1%. So the order matters. It's very, very important. So the resampling method is the easiest way to do a Monte Carlo simulation, okay? The second method is not the resampling method too. I need to change that in the article. It is the generated data method, okay? For this method, we'll use the previous distribution of the price, okay, the historical distribution, because we know that the price follow a specific distribution. But what I'm saying since the beginning is that the price follow a distribution that we may know, but we'll never be able to know the next price. That's the definition of a statistical process, you know. What we can do is generating, based on this distribution, the several paths that the past could be, okay? Without resampling, but really taking into account, for example, the mean and the standard deviation and creating new path using that. In trading, generally we use the geometrical Brovian motion, okay? And that's the formula here. You can be a bit afraid by that, but it's very, very, very easy, really, trust me. So what it means is that so here you have all the um, definition, for example, P 
t plus one is the price of the stock at time t plus one. Okay, here sigma is the annual volatility. Here delta t is the time step between t and t plus one, etc. Okay, so each price will be the price of yesterday times exponential the annual rate of return minus one divided by two the volatility square okay times the time step okay if you want to do one day it will be one over 252 because the delta t is expressed in years then you will have the sigma times the square root of the time step times epsilon which is a normal distribution variable so it follows a normal distribution. All of that to say that when you read the equation is not so difficult to understand, okay? Once you have done that to create several simulations, okay? Because once we will do that for 252 days, for example, one time, we have done that only for one path. You need to do that as many times you want more path, okay? So to do a Monte Carlo simulation, it's like for the Rockford optimization or the CPCV, you have several steps. The first one in the Monte Carlo simulation is to create several paths. Either you resample the um, trading strategy returns, okay? Or you can simulate the prices of the different path that the prices can follow. And you apply your trading strategy on it. So you will have the returns on different paths that the price could be in the past, okay? Once you have that, you can quantify the risk in the worst case possible, okay? So which is the maximum drawdown, but the worst case possible from the worst path, okay? That's important. So once you have your several paths, like here, for example, you compute the drawdown for each of them, and at the end, you will have a distribution of this drawdown, okay? And you can compute the risk of win. If at 20% of loss, you will cut all your position and take a break to think about what you did wrong, for example, the goal is to never go as far in the drawdown, okay? So you need to compute the risk of win, the possibility that your drawdown cross below this line, okay? And here it is equal to zero because the raw drawdown is around 18%. But we can see that the majority of the drawdown are below 10%, for example, okay? So that gives you an idea about the risk you can have with your strategy. Because if in your work forward optimization, you are on this path, okay, with 3% of drawdown, Maybe when you will put it in live trading, you will not understand why you have 15% of drawdown, okay? And that's because you didn't backtest all the possible possibilities, okay? And the step number three is to make performance estimations. And you can do that only with the generated data method, okay? Because as I said, if you choose the resampling method, the risk will be different, but the performance, so the return will be the same. So it doesn't make any sense to do that. Once you have all these simulations, you can compute for each day different centil and create areas. Where the area begins is the centil number five. It means that, for example, here, okay, for the day 50, the odds to have a return lower than 20%, than minus 20%, more precisely, is minus than 5%. Here it is the Santil 5, 95, 75, 25, 40, 60, and here the median, so the Santil 50, okay? And the goal is to have some approximation. For example, even if your drawdown in the work for optimization is 3%, as I said, maybe you want to know what your returns in the next year could be, okay? And here we can see that it's not so good because in a lot of cases you can lose money but you have also a median return around 20 which is quite good so you need to take that into account and in the next video we'll see how to combine all the different methods to rate each method 
and to have also an overall weight of your trading backtesting. Now the benefits and the limit. So the benefits and the limitations of the Monte Carlo simulation are quite similar to the rock forward and the robustness test with some specificities. First, it's very easy to use. You can create some risk metric of your trading strategy, which is very, very important, okay? Because you always need to keep in mind to optimize a risk reward ratio, not only a return or a reward ratio, it's always both. And the Monte Carlo simulation will allow you to do that, okay? Because as we'll generate several trading strategy return, you can have the return and the risk for each path and you will be able to generate some distribution to give you some possible range when you will put your strategy in live trading. The other advantage that the robustness testing CPCV or the rock forward optimization don't have is the simulated path, okay? With the resampling method, we will use the historical data, but with the data generated method, we will regenerate new path. And that's quite interesting. Monte Carlo simulation is one way to do that. You can do that also, for example, using GAN, which is a deep learning model. And the limitations of the Monte Carlo simulation is that you can't find optimal parameters like for the CPCV. So that's why the work file optimization is also important. And also that in trading, the distribution is dynamic, okay? It means that if you use a Monte Carlo simulation on a poker problem, for example, each 100 observation, you will have the same distribution, okay? But in trading, it's not the case. If you take one year, you will have one distribution. A second year, you will have another distribution. So you need to deal with that. And it's not so easy to deal with that. So that's a limitation of the Monte Carlo simulation. But to fix that, you can use more complex method you can really do a lot of things. All the thing that I explaining you is not a non-exhaustive list. You can really add a lot of things. And that's why the next video will not be the end of this playlist because I need to add few other videos talking about how to deal with testing several trading strategies on the same data set. So I hope you like this video. In the next video, we'll detail how to analyze a backtest from the workflow optimization to the Monte Carlo simulation and how to rate each method to have really an idea of this backtesting. Is it good or not?